Hi guys, welcome to my coffee show. My name is Jack and today, oh, today we're going to have a big video. Today I will compare two of my lovely espresso machines. Decent espresso machine and I will put it against La Pavoni uh, Esperto. Two machines that are so, so different. So if you're as excited as myself, Definitely click like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Let's start with the La, La Pavoni. It's made mostly with the stainless steel and brass. You can see those two pressure gauges. So this one here, it only shows you the pressure inside the boilers. And then this is a very important pressure gauge. So that's the pressure gauge of the shot. And because of that, you know exactly where you are and you can do the pressure profiling. Machine looks lovely as you can see uh, the wood um, everything is shining at least now when i clean it up uh, normally it's very difficult to maintain that uh, level of shine uh, i would say it's more like a piece of art at least to myself and when you put it against uh, a decent uh, decent is a great machine but not many people would say it's a it's a pretty machines this is made out of metal uh, mostly all the internals are, are good quality the same as with the la pavoni few differences i mean obviously there is that uh, tablet here <laughs> and you won't find the tablet uh, on the la pavoni la pavoni there is that boiler you the, the one that you can hear boiling the water uh, there is a thermo block in the in the descent both of those machines can be ready in a relatively short period of time uh, about five minutes for decent and about five minutes for la pavoni the difference is that uh, with la pavoni even though the you have that green light here and once you reach that green light and once that pressure is on about 0 0.7 0 0.8 that means the machine is ready but it's not the group head uh, it's still a bit cold what i do i do few dry pumps just to make sure the temperature is where i want it to be with decent i mean after that five minutes you can leave it for a few more but it's pretty much ready you don't have to flush it you don't have to do anything it records the temperature pretty much at the pack so that group head that funny looking group head it got lots of sensors for pressure water flow and the temperature you have that temperature stripe here but it is not accurate i also bought that cheap uh, um, electric uh, thermometer if you pull multiple shots sometimes that group head can get too hot what i do i put some cold water here maybe a cube of ice and i just soak the group head until the temperature goes down so, um, this machine can be a little bit wobbly so when i pull a shot i like to hold the eagle so just to maintain the downward pressure the more shots you pull the the the, the more consistent than will, they will be but they will never be exactly the same but what that lever offers you it's uh, something that the la pavoni owners can understand but people who never had it might, might struggle with it's it's what you feel the response you get from the pack and that's how you adjust the pressure on this machine some people like to put a little mirror here so they can see the flow of espresso but the rest is just the response from the pack and then you can you can save the shot that wasn't perfect that water chamber here it's it's there's a limited capacity so it's relatively small and i normally put 15 grams of coffee in it's difficult uh to pull a shot that is more longer than 30 grams the steam can be a bit wet here i mean probably slightly on a wet side now uh, the steam on uh, descent first of all this is isolated so i mean it can get warm but it's not hot the tip can get hot but that's another thing uh, and the steam is very dry.
if you are obsessed about the control, if you are a control freak, uh, Descent can be for you. You can literally adjust everything. Uh, temperature, pressure, water flow. Uh, and you can see the readings on the on the screen exactly where you are, where you should be. It helps to to bring your um, coffee game to the another level or two or three. In the first few months of having it, I've learned so much about the coffee, the flow, um, different ways of extracting coffee. I have what twenty or probably more than that different profiles. But funny enough, the, the most profile you find on the Descent are the a kind of a liver style profiles. Something lots of people criticize about uh, Descent is, is the noise. There is a certain level of noise that you have to get used to. I have no issue with that, but there is always something like that when you when you either you pull a shot or you steam the milk with la pavoni it's just that water being reboiled reheated if you need more details you can look at my previous videos i will put some in the in the description uh, below for most of us for what what's the most important is how is the espresso that's the one question, but also how close the espresso, the liver style espresso from Descent is to liver uh, style shot from the liver machine. <laughs> we will pull two shots of espresso on each machine. We will use two different coffees and two different styles of espresso. And by the end, I will give you my, my final thoughts, final results. First profile that we will use today, it will be Londinium style shot. So how it looks like on the descent? Well, the pack of coffee is slammed with the high water volume first, and then that stops. And then we have a pressurized pre-infusion uh, at about three bars for like a some period of time and then the pressure goes up to about nine bars and then it's, it's it, it goes down on la pavoni the way i will pull it i will uh, slowly lift the liver up and i will let that water soak for about 20 seconds then i will apply a pressure of about uh, three bars and i will hold that pressure for 10 seconds then i will ramp up the pressure to, to uh, nine bars and then it will be a decline of the pressure. We'll be aiming on both of those machines for one to two ratio. And I will start with the 15 grams of coffee on both of those machines. With Caravan Coffee Rosa, Maria Ramirez, coffee from Guatemala. And uh, tasting notes we should get here, cherry jam, melon and soft caramel. As a grinder, I will use a DF64 with SSP multipurpose burrs. So that's that pressurized free infusion. Now the pressure goes up. There is a little bit of channeling. Okay. That's the light roast, so don't expect a beautiful flow. Not a great looking shot, but this coffee, and you've seen it on this channel, this coffee never looked very pretty. It took uh, about 33 seconds, so I'm not obsessed with time for this particular shot. Over 30, definitely. So you can see that was that splash of water first, then it went down. Then the pressure, pressurized pre-infusion started. Uh, then the pressure ramped up to 9 and it was slowly declining. I'm on a setting number 7 or 8 on a DF64. Chocolate. and some fruits, but I wouldn't say cherries. Cheers. Hmm. It's not bad. Well, very fruity, thin body, some sweetness. Cherries, I cannot, there is some bitterness in the background, um, 
maybe like a dark chocolate. I would say kind of like a more like a pomegranate uh, fruits rather than rather than cherries. Uh, but there is that there is that nice fruitiness in the shot, a vi vibrant shot. Let's see what the refractometer says. Okay, so we've got 9.24 TDS. The ratio was 14.9 grams of coffee in, 31 and a half grams of liquid out. And we've got 19 and a half percent extraction. Shot looks uh, maybe slightly better, the crema. There are still some chocolatey notes, but um, kind of less fruity and more floral, floral. Cheers. I think I got more of the note separations uh, in the shot from the descent. This one is more, the flavors are kind of more mixed together and it's more towards chocolatiness. Although there are some like a fruity hints in the background. And I think if I, if I try really, really, really hard, I may somewhere far, far away, I may get some cherries. Which shot is better? I use the same uh, settings on the DF64 for both of them. We got 28 grams uh, of liquid here versus 31 and a half over there. So it's not like there's a huge difference. As I said, a little bit more clarity in the in the shots from the descent, but here a little bit more body in a shot from <laughs> La Pavoni. I, I possibly enjoy the La Pavoni 2% more. Let's see what the refractometer says. 9.96 TDS. The ratio is similar, but slightly different. And I'm getting 19, about 19% extraction. So, so now for the second shot, uh, I will use a different coffee and that will be a St. Martin's coffee roaster and the coffee from uh, Brazil and the tasting notes, uh, chocolate, cherry and sugar cane. We will put a different style, different profile. Uh, this time we will only pick at about six bars. The kind of similar profile to, to all other liver style shots. It's just that the that after the pre-infusion, which will stop at around four bars, the pressure will jump to six bars. And then there will be a gradual decline of the pressure. As a grinder, I will use, this time I will use a niche. I will start with the setting number 11. And now I will go to 6. And slowly declining. This time I got a nicely looking shot. Nice rich crema. 26 grams of coffee. Very green, sweet, kind of almondy uh, aroma and some uh, floral uh, smells as well. Cheers. Very rich, obviously the body, the body is uh, thick. Um, there is a sweetness, there is a still bitterness, so kind of like a dark you know, chocolate. The body is amazing, but obviously this is more like a ristretto. Uh, plus we used um, niche some almonds nuts dark caramel cherries no chocolate yeah maybe a hint too bitter let's see what the refractometer says got 10.67 uh, tds uh, 18 uh, and a half percent extraction and we have a shot there was some channeling as you could see have a look so it's still nice a bit less dark the shot itself took 33 seconds 
As you could see, there was some channeling here and there. That smells pretty much the same as the other one. Maybe a bit sweeter, that could be my imagination. Cheers. A bit milder. There is definitely less body in the shot. So again, the previous shots, um, La Pavoni was got slightly more body. This shot, um, La Pavoni got lots more body, so the shot was thicker, even though the ratio is the same. So I'm, I got about 27 grams of, of liquid here, 26 over there, the same dosage of coffee. Uh, but uh, I'm not getting as much bitterness. So the tasting notes are pretty much the same. So there's a sweetness, chocolatiness. Do you prefer body or do you prefer mild taste? I think I enjoy this more because it's less bitter. That's the only reason. But if the other shot was a tad less bitter, it would win because of the nice thick uh, body. Let's see the refractometer. Okay, so 10.17, looks like it's slightly lower than the previous one, uh, well over 18% extraction. Okay, so first of all guys, if you are still here, definitely click like and subscribe to the channel, I'm so over caffeinated. Just purely for the taste, the first shot I would uh, give an edge to uh, La Pavoni, slight edge, the second shot um, a slight edge to the to the decent. The question that uh, I'm, I I was always curious to to find an answer for is how accurate those um, profiles on the decent are when you compare to the real deal. I have to say those shots, both of them, were similar. There's a one difference here uh, in both of those shots that I got more body from the shots on La Pavoni. So if you obsessed with the body, I mean, you, there are ways to extract more on the, on the decent, but um, you, like for like, you may uh, notice the difference. Uh, the shots on the decent can be slightly thinner. Not always, and lots of people will disagree, but that's, that's my con conclusion. Few things that we haven't mentioned is, uh, how easy it is to operate both of those machines. I mean, a decent is a semi-automatic machine, uh, pulling multiple shots, steaming milk, uh, very easy. It's easier for me to clean decent. Uh, there are some uh, profiles just to, you just click, put the uh, detergent tablet and, and it cleans itself. Uh, obviously, La Pavoni being an open boiler, you need to, think about where you put it if you have some little ones running around you don't want them to accidentally touch decent offers so many possibilities as i mentioned the con full control and so on and so on uh, the visualization of of your shots so you can see pretty much where you where you are where you should be um, and there is a possibility also of taking control of the shot during the shot so you can change the pressure for water flow uh, during the shot. I haven't done it yet. I haven't tried it yet. They keep updating the, the software. Every now and then you get, get updates and every now and then you get a new profiles to choose from. Uh, so this is never a boring machine. And, and there is that huge community behind it, uh, diaspora forum. So once you get a, a decent, if you want, you can join that diaspora forum. And there are people who are so deep into, into this machine, you can ask for the advice a few times I did. And uh, the, the response was almost immediately someone, someone they knew the answer to my uh, questions. But there is also a huge community behind uh, La Pavoni. There is a Facebook group for uh, La Pavoni owners. Something that I have noticed being a member of that uh, La Pavoni group is that machines from 70s, maybe even earlier, still around, still functional, still making amazing coffee. You kind of buy into that heritage, uh, that, that history of, of espresso making. I'm, I'm almost certain that this La Pavoni, if you buy La Pavoni today, it will outlive yourself and it possibly will still be used by your grandchildren. Can I say the same about the Decent? I don't think so. <laughs> well, I might be wrong, but this machine hasn't been around for that while. For some people, a Decent might be too modern, too 
uh, kind of soulless uh, and other people would say uh, that is actually not the soul that is important it's the taste of espresso and as you could see on my video those espressos were very similar and both tasty price wise uh, obviously this is damn expensive they don't do the mass producing if they did that the prices would go down uh, La Pavoni Esperto here uh, I paid 1200 pounds so probably more expensive now uh, decent well much more would I recommend to have both uh, not necessarily because they are both expensive machines I bought my La Pavoni first if I had a decent first wouldn't go for uh, uh, La Pavoni I won't be selling it because I love it and I and I have fun pulling the shots. On the other hand, if you have something like a um, E61 group head machine, then having the lever machine like La Pavoni, that's a, that would be something I would strongly recommend. Is it better or worse? That's not for me to, to say, but it is definitely different and it gives you more control. If you have a decent and if you have any other lever uh, machines, tell me how those shots compare. Do you find them similar? Do you find them completely different? Which one is better? If you are thinking about getting a new espresso machine, uh, are you leaning more towards the uh, modern contemporary design or you are a fan of classic look like a La Pavoni? But for today, uh, thank you very much for watching. My name is Jack. This is my uh, coffee show and hopefully I will see you soon. Thank you. Bye.